In today's video, I wanna talk with you all about flour substitutes for baking and making things like pancakes, waffles, other breakfast favorites, and even savory dishes. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Jessica, and here on my channel, we focus on all things mom life, whether that's cooking or cleaning, but everything we do in my space does have a bit of a healthy twist as I'm a holistic nutritionist and a nutritional practitioner. I share a lot of baking recipes, whether it's here on my channel or over on Instagram. And one of the top questions I often get is, can I substitute X flour with X? So in today's video, we're gonna go through my favorite flours, why I love them, and how they line up nutritionally. So let's get started with one that you tend to see me use quite frequently. And I'm gonna jump off with this one because you can use it one for one with gluten flour, and that is oat flour. I just make my own oat flour at home because it is as simple as it comes where you take oats, you put them in a blender or a food processor, you pulse them really quickly and voila, you have your own oat flour. I like to of course use organic, non-GMO, gluten-free oats because it is such a wonderful, amazing texture that can be substituted one for one with gluten flour. Likewise, it can be substituted one for one with whole wheat flour and almond flour in any of your baking recipes. So if you're tired of converting recipes from across the internet to fit your lifestyle and gluten-free dietary needs, then check out some of my previous videos. I have countless ideas for you. I will put them in the cards up above and likewise I will link them in the description box. But oat flour is simply just a wonderful choice because it is naturally gluten-free. Of course, follow the packaging, especially if you have celiac disease, but you can substitute oat flour in almost every single recipe for a one-to-one -one ratio. And because like I said earlier, it is so easy to make at home. I like to make it right on the spot so that it's nice and fresh and it gives you that wonderful flour-like texture, especially if you're used to using gluten flour. Super easy, right? So as I was saying earlier, oat flour will work wonderfully in things like pancakes, waffles, cookies, muffins, brownies, and any other quick breads that you're making inside of a loaf pan like banana bread. And so be sure to check out those recipes below because I do have some wonderful zucchini banana bread recipes that I've already done here on my channel where you can get a ton of ideas using oat flour. I have a beautiful carrot honey oat loaf that is delicious, but there is one caveat that I wanna say is that you cannot use oat flour in traditional loaf bread. There is no gluten in oat flour to activate the yeast. So oat flour is not a good idea if you're looking to make a wonderful bread or cinnamon rolls or anything that you might need to use yeast to make self-rising flour. Next up is an all-purpose gluten-free flour mix. I love the King Arthur one. It's a wonderful substitute and I get this question all the time. Can I use a mix that is gluten-free instead of an all-purpose white flour? And the short answer is yes. Now make sure that the packaging does say one for one and that it's recommended in the type of recipes that you're trying to create. Some are better for cookies and quick breads, whereas if you're using it for something like a pancake mix, it can definitely taste like sand. So I typically don't recommend swapping out the one for one gluten-free flours in those type of recipes unless it's specific to a pancake mix, whereas the other ones I have in front of me, I do prefer for baked goods. However, some people just like to get the box of gluten-free one for one. King Arthur makes a great one. I will put that up here on the screen. Likewise. I will link it in my Amazon storefront below. And those are wonderful substitutes if you're not quite a baker and you don't wanna be making the swaps on your own end. But I will say, I hope by the end of this video, you feel confident enough in picking and using your own gluten-free flours. I wanna say that this next flour is my favorite flour, but that's hard to choose. It's like picking your favorite child, but it's definitely one of my most used flours, and that is cassava flour. I try to clean it up to have it look pretty, but cassava flour is definitely messy because it is very fine and very lightweight, so it tends to have the powder go everywhere. But it is by far my go-to, and it is gaining major momentum as the go-to gluten-free, grain-free flour. And it's not surprising for those who follow more of a restrictive diet and don't wanna do things like grains because it does give you the exact same consistency as wheat flour, which is ideal. So you'll wanna watch some of my other videos and I will link those for you in the description box down below, but you can literally use this as a one for one substitute because it is so darn close. I know it seems too good to be true, but I promise you, which is why this might be the holy grail of gluten-free, grain-free flours, 
because it is stress free. And yes, cassava flour is naturally gluten and grain free. Cassava flour is not the same as tapioca flour. While sometimes the term cassava flour and tapioca flour are used interchangeably, the fact that they are very different. Tapioca is the starch extracted from the cassava root through the process of washing and pulping, and then the wet pulp is then squeezed to extract the starchy liquid. Once all the water has evaporated from the starchy liquid, the tapioca flour remains. Alternatively, the cassava flour is the whole root. It's simply peeled and dried and then ground. This means that there is more dietary fiber in cassava flour than tapioca flour. And this also allows me to do things like cassava flour tortillas, which would not be possible with tapioca flour. And if you're familiar with any of my work, then you know I am a huge, huge fan of fiber-rich diets. So that is thus why you see me use cassava flour in almost all of my cooking and baking videos here on my channel. Cassava flour is the most similar, as we spoke to earlier, to whole wheat flour of all the gluten-free flours that are out there. So this is why it does have those holy grail characteristics of cassava flour, Unlike other gluten-free flours like almond flour and coconut flour, which we will get to, cassava flour is very, very mild and neutral in flavor. It's also not grainy or gritty in texture. Rather, it's very soft and powdery, like I was mentioning earlier, so it does tend to fly up, but that light powdery softness of it makes it beautiful to bake and cook with. I feel like I'm gonna start all of these off with this is one of my favorites, but that's the point of this video, is that I'm showing you my favorites. And the next one is brown rice flour. It's 100% stone ground brown rice, and it has a mild nutty flavor, and it's versatile to use in whether it's gluten-free bread, or baking and even thickening sauces and gravies. It's also wonderful in all gluten-free baking recipes, things like pancakes that we talked about earlier, muffins and gluten-free bread. I love to also use this in many of my savory dishes because it does have that mild nutty flavor and the texture of it is wonderful. Also, I know Thanksgiving just passed here in the States, I use brown rice flour to thicken our gravy. So I like to use it in both sweet and savory recipes. Organic brown rice, the kind that I use, is used to make brown rice flour. And we know that brown rice is known for its high nutritional value. So it's beneficial for those of you who are following a healthy, dense, nutrient-dense diet. The benefits that come from using this array of nutrients in brown rice are, one, it's dietary fiber. Brown rice is a wonderful source of dietary fiber because brown rice still has that layer of bran and germ. And when they grind that up, that does go into the flour. Additionally, protein. You can get a significant amount of protein from brown rice flour, especially when you compare it to other flours like white rice flour. You can use brown rice flour for things like pie crust, additionally breads, pancakes like we talked about, but brown rice flour can also be used to thicken soups, sauces, and gravies. And I love to throw it in things like tomato soup to really thicken it up and add the extra nutritional value. Now moving on to the most delicious smelling flour that I have in front of me, and that is coconut flour. I love coconut flour. Coconut flour is a soft, natural, grain, and gluten-free flour produced from the dried meat of coconut. So coconut flour is a natural byproduct of the coconut milk production. When producers compress the coconut for its milk, bits of coconut meat remains. They then dry out the coconut meat at low temperatures and grind it until it produces a soft powder which is a wonderful, wonderful substitute in baking. Many people are fearful to use coconut flour because it is a denser flour than most of the gluten-free flours that are out there, but it is packed to the brim with nutrients, especially more than any of the traditional grain-based flours. And it's of course naturally gluten-free. Coconut flour is fairly high in protein, fiber, of course, which makes it one of my top contenders, and healthy fats. It's relatively low in carbohydrates for those of you who do count carbs comparatively to the other flours that we're talking about today. A single serving of two tablespoons contains a whopping five grams of fiber and three grams of protein, as well as one and a half grams of healthy fats. So it's this combination of nutrients, the fiber, the protein, and the fat that makes it so filling and nutrient dense. 
Coconut flour can be tricky to work with because it's not a grain-based flour. It's not easy to substitute, so it's best to use established recipes. I, again, will link those for you in the description box down below to make it a little bit easier and less intimidating to work with. Okay, my apologies. My family is playing hide and seek downstairs, so if you hear screaming children, that is why. So unlike the other flours that we talked about today, you cannot substitute coconut flour on a one-to-one -one ratio for all purpose flours or the other flours we talked about today. So what you'll wanna do is cut down on the amount of flour versus a one-to-one, -one, you'll wanna use a quarter of what you would typically use. In addition, for every one cup of flour, you typically require one extra egg for moisture and texture. You also may need to increase the other liquids in your recipe and make small adjustments as you're going to fit your baking needs. If you're nervous about using coconut flour, just be sure to use the recipes that do call for coconut flour, and I do have many of those on my channel, so be sure to check out those resources down below. But don't let that hinder you, because of all the flours that we're talking about, this one definitely packs a punch with nutrition, and you don't need as much of it. And also, the taste is just incredible, and it's exceptionally filling, so it's wonderful to use this in baked goods, especially if you're gonna be packing them in your kids' lunch boxes, because it is so nutrient-dense. It will keep keep them full for a very long time. So make sure to check out the recipes in the description box down below to get you started on your baking journey. So now I wanna hear from you guys in the comment section down below. What are your favorite gluten-free flours and how do you substitute them in both your sweet and savory recipes? I hope you found the information in today's video helpful and if you did, it means a lot to me if you give it a big thumbs up. And now the subscribe button is right over here on the screen. Give that a click, that way you don't miss a single video and I hope to see you back here next Thursday.